Hey, what's up? This is International Master Scrology here with another lesson on tactical signals. This one's on Emmanuel Neyman's fourth signal, the night fork. The night is difficult to master because it doesn't move in straight lines like the other pieces. So first, before we look at any practical examples, we're going to look at some general things you need to learn about the night. These are the knight's blind spots. It would take the knight four moves to reach one of them. A blind spot is two squares diagonally from the knight. So if the knight's on c2, then a4 and e4 are its blind spots. Putting a rook or a queen on one of these squares could severely limit your opponent's knight. All right, so if the knight's on e7, what are its blind spots? g5 and c5. If you cannot get on one of these squares and you have to get up close to the knight, then stay on a vertical or horizontal square. It'll take the knight three moves to get to one of these squares. Now, if you only need to worry about two pieces getting forked, then what you can do is keep your pieces on opposite color squares. For example, White doesn't have a chance at forking black's king and bishop because black can just keep his pieces on different color squares and he'll always avoid the fork like that. Those are some basic tips on avoiding the knight fork. But if you want to learn how to dominate the knight, then you have to practice moving it. So what you can do is you can put a knight on any random square and then pick another random square and calculate how many moves it would take the knight to get there and call out the route you had in mind. For example, if the knight's on g6 and you simply call out c3 as the destination square, then you can say 3 because it would take 3 moves to get there. f4, d5, c3. You call it the number of moves it would take to get there and the route. Now, if you want, you can call out other routes. That's, that's totally fine. For example, here I could say f4, e2, c3, or e7, d5, c3, etc., etc. And you can add pawns in, in, on random squares and avoid the squares where you can be taken. So this is another example. Let's say my knight's on g5, and the destination square is c7. So I would say 4, because it would take 4 moves to get there, and then I would call out a root. I would call out the root. E4, C5, A6, C7. So do this a lot so you can become proficient at moving the knight. This position comes from the blitz game between Alexei Dreyev and Dmitry Andraken. White wins a rook thanks to the alignment of the bishop and the queen. But it's not yet resignable because black has compensation in the form of white's weak king. Remember my lesson on king position? Uh-huh. Black plays h5, and that stalemates the white king. Remember my lesson on king position? At this point, white should be looking out for tactics, according to my advice. But he played the reckless queen d3. What he should have played is queen c8, followed by rook d4, giving back some of the material with the idea of drawing the queen or the knight away from from white's king. So back to the game, black to play. Pause the video and find the knight fork. Ready? Queen h1. And white's got no choice but to interpose with the bishop because the king is stalemated. The king doesn't have any legal moves. Now after bishop h2, knight f4 forks the king and the queen. So black used white's weak king position and an alignment to make the knight fork work. This position comes from the classical game between Shakhryar Mamedyarov and Sami Shoker. White's totally winning because he's up a piece, but black is generating a threat, so it's not yet resignable. Black's pinning the knight on e6 to the unprotected bishop on g4 and attacking it twice. So you'd think the best move would be to give back some material with rook d7 and then something like f4 
with the idea of f5, turning e6 into an outpost. But Mehmed Yara finds a better solution, to stay up a full piece because he wants to maintain all of his material advantage. He doesn't want to give anything back. Because what he notices is that there are a lot of signals in white's favor. Black's king position is shaky. The bishop on d7 is poorly protected. The rook on h8 is totally unprotected. And there are alignments all over the place. From black's point of view, this is a pin. But from white's point of view, it's a potential discovery. White's rook and bishop converge upon the d7 square. White's rook aligns with black's unprotected h8 rook, which means that the h7 pawn is pinned. And on the 7th rank, black's got a few pieces lined up. So Mamed Yarov takes advantage of all these signals. Pause the video and find the best move for white. Ready? Knight f8. When I was going over the game, I was like, huh? And then I was like, ah, that's nice. White's forking d7 and g6. White's attacking d7 three times, and it's only being defended twice. And white's knight also threatens to take on g6, which forks the king on e7 and the rook on h8. Of course, that wouldn't be possible without the favorable alignment white has on the h-file. Now, if black plays king f8, then white takes on d7 and goes into a simplified endgame up a piece. If black plays rook f8, then rook h7 exploits the alignment of black's pieces on the 7th rank. So, for example, rook f7, rook f7, king f7, and rook d7. Once again, white's in a simplified endgame up a piece. In the game, Shoker played bishop g4, and white forked black's king and rook with knight g6. The game ended after king e6 and f3. White does a little switcheroo. He wins the g4 bishop because it's trapped. It's got nowhere to go. For example, rook g8, knight h4, and white's ready to take the bishop on the next move. So that has to do with the signal of trapped pieces. That's the next lesson in this series. And that's it for Neyman's fourth signal, the knight fork. Remember to use the tips I gave you at the beginning of the lesson. They're simple and useful. And also remember that knight forks rarely fall from the sky out of nowhere. They're mostly accompanied by other signals. Alright guys, follow me on Twitter at Squirology, and I'll see you on Chess.com. Bye.